All right, I am back. Of course, I know I said this before, but yes, I have on the same fit because we is popping this out in one day. But I'm Diamond B. Frazier. If you forgot and you were tuned into the Kickback Reloaded, and today I have with me Easy. Hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? We cool. They I. <laughs> so you are you were born and raised in Louisiana. Yeah, I was born and raised in Louisiana. Um, both my parents they from Nigeria, and they moved uh to Louisiana, and I was born there, and then. Yeah, that's it. Right, <laughs> so, so they were born in Nigeria. Yeah. Have you ever been to Nigeria? Yeah, like in uh, 94, 95, for like a couple months. And what would you say is the difference between being in Africa and being here? Uh, when people talk about like the ghetto here, like over there, that's the ghetto for real. Like, like they living in like shack houses. Like from my parents from they still live in like in shack houses and everything it's crazy over there so you're talking about like um just living situation and economic wise like whatever people complain about here has nothing on nah, Nigeria. no water over there sometimes no power they use generators to get power so that's crazy so okay so how did you get from louisiana to baltimore uh, I guess like back in those days, uh, wasn't no work down south. I guess at that time, so I think one of my parents' friends said moved to Baltimore was a lot of work. So, my parents moved to Baltimore. Okay, and how long did you stay in Baltimore? Since I was like, maybe since three. So I was like, I just really born in Louisiana. Then at like three, moved to Baltimore and been, then grew up there. How you like living in Baltimore? It was cool. Like it, like people have a knock on it, but it's a good city. It's just the people that make it bad. But you no, know, it's it's a good city for real. So all the stuff we see on TV is like for real, for real, or it's like no, nah, it's not even like that. I mean, stuff happen everywhere. They just make it seem like it's always happening in Baltimore. No, I mean it's for real, for real. It happens, but you gotta take the good with the bad. Did you ever fear living in Baltimore? No, not really, cause like. I feel as though, like, living there, you got to carry yourself a certain way, like, not to be fake. Just be yourself for real. Like, if you just be yourself, like, people going to accept you. So, as an outsider, if I'm from whatever and I just decide to pop up in Baltimore and just live there in the city, is there any warning you would have to give me? Or it's like, nah, like, you just move in with society. Move in, be yourself. Don't cause trouble. That's it. Okay. That's cool. So, how did you end up in PG County from Baltimore to PG? Uh, from Baltimore to PG? Uh, well, I got married. That's You got thing. married? Yeah. Did you meet your girl? Con well, first, congrats to you. Uh, That's a beautiful you. thing. Marriage is a really, really great thing. And I feel like there's not a lot of attention on it. And people kind of stray away from monogamy or marriage or anything in that love is like nah we working we moving kind of thing so um congrats on that thank you did you meet her in baltimore nah i met her it's a crazy story actually i met her for real tell me so like it was uh i think new year's like about to turn 2013 uh i was a couple of friends like went to the strip club first and then you went to this party out uh pd somewhere and i was like you know what i'm gonna go in there I don't even care. I'm just going to say my name, Javier, or something like that, for real. I don't even care if I ain't say my real name, whatever. To and specifically to the girl? Yeah, like, oh, to, okay. like to anybody I meet. Oh, like, anybody, okay. And that whole, out of that whole day, that's the only girl I talked to. So I told her that. I was like, after I got a number and everything, I was like, yo, something in me, I say my real name, for real. I don't know. I, thought, I felt something about it, for real. So I told her real name, and then been rocking sense. What made you go with Javier, and why did you feel like you had to have, like, this fake name? I don't know. I was just... I don't know. I think I was high that day for real. You, know. just be, you were high? Yeah. You were just being funny? I was just being funny. So 2013, we are now five years later and you are married. How did we get there? Uh, Her trusting me and me just trying to like evolve and grow as a person, as a man for real. And she helped you with that? A lot. Dang, shout out to her. All yeah. right, so I'm going to give you a couple of statements and I want you to tell me if you feel like that is you. And if it's not like you, then tell me how you really are. All right. All right, so this first one, from time to time, I get irrational and overly emotional. Being 100% honest, is that you? Yeah, that's me all the day. <laughs> I ain't going <laughs> to lie to you. That's me. Like, I don't know because I'm a Scorpio or whatever. I'm just like, 
and I just go from highs to lows every every day, every day. So with you, there's no real medium. It's like no, nah, it's just I'm on it's either one end or the other end, no middle. And how is that in balancing a relationship? How does your wife handle that? <sighs> That's a good question. I don't even know how she handled it, honestly. <laughs> like I'm a handful, but like I'm, I guess she. Uh, does she do a thing like she uh she hold me down and just like keep me humble about stuff like even like when even when I'm wrong like she tell me when I'm wrong she really real blunt with me so that's what I love about it so so irrational and overly emotional what things usually like trigger that for you sometimes it be like people way of thinking I guess like the way I think is like I gotta sometimes understand everybody don't think the same. So if their thoughts don't align with yours, it's like, oh no, nah, we got a problem. Yeah, and then I, like sometimes, like I guess uh, that might trigger a little temper sometimes because I'm a hot head. I ain't gonna lie to you. So <laughs> and you a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. But she helped me a lot though. Definitely helped me a lot. Man. So she's more out of the relationship, more like the calm one, and you kind of the feisty one, or she's feisty and it sometimes make you kind of back down. No, we both feisty. She just know how to calm me down. That's it. <laughs> That's a very interesting combination. Like, for her to be just as feisty as you, but she's still that one to calm you down. Yeah. Does she calm you? Like, when whatever conflict arises, is she the one to calm you down even though she's the one that made you upset? Yeah. All the time. Dang. She got a gift like that. Check her out. That's a bomb relationship right there. All right, so this next one. While I may play around when I'm single, the moment I commit to someone, I get serious about my relationship. And that's me. Uh, that's you. Yeah. So you single like it is what it is. I don't care. Move around. But once you get with a person, it's like, nah, it's no games. No games. Like, loyalty is like really big to me. So loyalty and trust. So if I'm in a relationship, that's it. <laughs> so a question had um, arose on my social media that I saw, and it was, can people does monogamy still exist or can people actually be with the same person for the rest of their lives? So the fact that you marry her, do your thoughts coincide with that? Yeah. I mean, cause like you gotta look at it like, like this, like, uh, like most, I guess say most men, most like you beat women too, they look at it like certain things for like sexual wise. If you can get past that in a person, you don't, you don't really gotta cheat for it. Like if you got like a bomb relationship with somebody, like, and y'all connect on a deeper level. Ain't no reason. Ain't no point to cheat for real. So you didn't give me a confident yes oh, about that, monogamy still existing. It's a confident yes for you, but you for just me, feel like but it in doesn't society really now, exist. Nah, in society now, not to, nah, it really don't. The people just they want to do everything. They just want to do what they want to do for real. But you feel like nah, I'm gonna be with her for the rest of my life. Like I ain't, I don't need to look nowhere else. Like I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. Cool. So. Let's take it back. You decided to start music seriously last year. Yeah. Right? So um, I don't know. I do know how old you are. So let's take it back. When you were 16, where were you in life? 16. Uh, where was that? Like, dang, I was. 16. That's probably about like maybe a junior high school. I think I was a senior high school. You was a senior. Oh, you was a. No, I turned, I turned 17 it? and. Uh, my birthday late, so I, like when I was uh, as soon as I got twelfth grade, I was sixteen. But I turned seventeen late, right then after. So, oh dang, okay. So you was a senior in high school. So what was that like during that time? Where were you at? Were you doing music? Were you you know pretty focused? Did you have a job? Was you high headed? What was going on? Sixteen Man, that was years old, crazy. Like at that time in my life, it was crazy. Sixteen, I had a job. I was doing good in school. Got in some trouble. I had a lot of trouble for real. What for trouble did you get into? Man, just hanging with the wrong crowd, like they robbed a couple people, you know, stole like stole a car, or whatever, and uh, people got caught. Was it just something to do, like, cause everybody else and it was like, ah, like I'm kind of with them, let me just do it, or you had desires to be? Nah, I was, this I guess like this, like yeah, I'm with them, whatever. Like this, this being young and dumb for real, honestly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was with them, got in trouble, whatever. People told, I ain't told, but people told for real. Mm -hmm. Stuff happening. There's like this idea about Nigerian parents like being real strict and like on it. Was that how <laughs> you were brought up? Yeah, if for Nigerian parents, like if if you ain't an engineer, 
uh, a lawyer, a doctor, they ain't having it. <laughs> so it's like kind of tough, like not being, not wanting to be none of them, and trying to like you know really be a musician. Like that's what I really took to younger. So them just seeing them three things, whatever, they didn't really focus on me per se like that. So. So are you an only child? No, I got a, a younger brother. I got an older sister, and then my mother. Before she, my my dad had two brothers, and they live. And like one, one is back here, and one died in, back in Nigeria. Oh wow! I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So, as a Nigerian parent, wanting their child to be some kind of engineer, something that evolves like real life, concrete education. How are they being receptive to you as a musician? Uh, I only talk to my parents honestly. You don't talk to your parents? No. Like, you don't have a relationship with them or you don't talk to them about music? I don't have a relationship at all with them. And when did this kind of, like, break off? <sighs> when my uh, when my dad, probably when I was, like, like 21, 22, whatever. He just, I don't know, he was not, like, he, he was really never, he was there, but never really there. He, like, he did things, but he didn't do things. So, like, he never made a connection for real, for real. And my mom... Maybe like after I met my wife for real, like not just be like my mom, like she was like I don't know, my mom, my mom crazy. I was gonna say that my mom really, really, really crazy. I say that. So it was after you met your wife that your relationship with your mom kind of like went downhill. It was already going downhill, but like after I met her, I started saying like different stuff my mom was doing. Like at first, like I like before my wife, I was just like, I was like just taking it, whatever. But at that matter, like I started saying stuff, and just started like it was went bad after that. Okay, so is there? Do you feel like there's a point in reconciliation? Like your parents are your parents, because, um, and I just asked you a question, but like from my understanding, at, in Africa, there's like this big thing about taking care of like the elders or like your parents or stuff like that so knowing that you no longer have a relationship at this time with them do you still abide by that like you feel like at some point it's gonna come together and you're gonna do what you're supposed to do yeah because yeah because i know my uh i know nobody else will do it but but me so yeah okay and you have a daughter that's my that's my that's my sister's uh, your sister's daughter. but you kind of like yeah, take, take care, care of her yeah like, and your sister has a relationship with your parents? Yeah, my mom, yeah. yeah. To some extent? Yeah, yeah, more more, more than I do. Way more than I do. Okay. All right, so back musically, before I get into a couple of things, um, why did you decide to get serious with music? Did you feel like that was maybe your only option, or it was just something you really wanted to do? It's something I want to do, and it's kind of like sometimes it might be because like I got a record on my, I got a record for, I got a family on my record for real, so it's like it's kind of hard to get into like big companies for like making really top dollars. So like also, I mean, I got a trade also electrician, so I be doing that on the side too. But it's like you know, music, I, I, it's been always my calling for real. Like I just, I was always been, I always been good at it for real. So it's always been my calling. So I just wanted to do it, like take it real serious. So if you didn't have a felony and you could honestly do anything that you wanted to do, what would that be? That uh, honestly, probably, uh, probably music still. You probably <laughs> wouldn't. You probably would still yeah, do music. Yeah, still music. It probably it probably easier to like to find it for real, like and to find the money for it. But I still do music. Were you discouraged at some point, and then you felt like, "All right, I have to do music. Like, I gotta, I gotta, like, music. All right, I'm good at it. Now I gotta do it. Like, did you go and try to get a job and try to get something, and you felt like it's but so many opportunities I could really do because of what I did in my past. Now I kind of, I have to pop off with that. Yeah, because like, I don't know like anybody else, but for me, like, I can't. I gotta be my own. I gotta be my own boss, bro. I can't work under nobody. I got an attitude problem. So like. Somebody tell me something. I'm ready to snap on point. Like, oh, so, hey, so. how you gonna work with people? That's the most important thing. And even like the business side of music is really gonna like get on your nerves, nerves. Yeah, I mean, like, but that's the thing. Like, I, I in my mind, I be wanting to do it, but I know like 
I really can't say it. So I did like I'm I'm really calm. So when it, when it comes to everything, I don't really like I don't really say much. Like people generally like me, so I'm just calm, cool. But I know like certain things people do. Like if I see them doing, like I put it in my head mentally, like okay, not to mess with this person or that, like that. For real. So the way you are in this interview right now is very mellow. Like me, like my person, I'm up here, mm -hmm. and so you bringing me down here, which is cool. I don't mind. We talking, but is this how you are in general? Like you really just like eh. yeah, I'm really mellow person. I'm really mellow for real. Like uh, like once like you get to know me like a lot, lot more. Then you open up and yeah. you're more like bubbly. So. When we do circle back around and you come back to visit me, the energy would be different. But it's like, I don't really know her like that. No, I'm way different. I mean, I'm still turning up right now a little bit, but on the mellow <laughs> side. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, so social media-wise, I, like, you're a new artist. Yeah. So it's really hard for me to really um, find out what kind of person you are. Other than this conversation right now, I learned a lot more than I did when I was doing my research. Mm -hmm. So I went and I looked at your Twitter because everybody has to tweet out something. They're feeling something, how they feel. And I didn't find nothing. Like, I was searching up and down, and I it really appears like you just started it. Now I've been having you Twitter like that for honestly. I so what you Instagram. did, just deleted a bunch of tweets? No, nah, I probably made a new one on Twitter for real. Oh, I ain't okay, gonna lie that's to what you, it was. For real, but I don't even use Twitter like that. Like, I just, like, maybe, like, Started like maybe a month ago to like on Instagram you could just post to Twitter so I started doing that for real but other than that I be on Instagram mostly a little bit on Facebook but Twitter I don't know it's like nah you ain't really with that nah. one thing I did see that you tweeted um a couple of years ago you said definitely would be dope if Wale retweeted my tweet a big fan of his and in my opinion the best doing it nobody touching him lyrically facts two years later you still feel that exact same way facts why what is it about Wale that you just really like? Uh, first of all, he's Nigerian. I shout out to Wale. Uh, and then, like, secondly, like, to me, like, like flow-wise, lyrical-wise, he the best out, like, in the rap game right now to me. Like, mm -hmm. He the best. Like, nobody can touch him. Like, I'm just being biased, like, for real. But he the <laughs> best, yeah. <laughs> no, he's dope. Yeah. No, he's really good. I I can honestly say, like, I'm a Wale, Wale fan, for real. So how do you feel, like, where he's at in his career right now? I'm happy for him. You are. Yeah. You I know. Pe I know people like uh, like probably don't like him because he wears hard on the sleeve. But I like that about the artists. Like they're really passionate about their work. I'm the same way. So if somebody coming to you like easy. I'm not really rocking with that. Like, is that where the emotional, irrational side gonna come out, or it's like nah, like your opinion, your opinion. That's your opinion. I might. I, I might actually question to like to gauge your opinion even more. Mm -hmm. But your opinion's your opinion. So. Social media wise, like when you're getting this type of feedback, are you engaging back with people as well? Like you getting flooded comments and people not messing with what you're doing. You're kind of taking his approach to some extent, like defending your art or like pressing down on questions. Or it's like, nah, I ain't gonna worry about that. I ain't worry about that. Social media, it's like to me, it's real, but it's not real. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we're gonna get into with it or quit it. I'm gonna give All you a right. statement. You tell me you with it. Or you quit it. What do you mean? You agree. Quit it like, no, I don't. All right, cool. But then you got to tell me why. All right. All right, so the first one, their worst thing, the worst thing a native-born African can do is leave his country to come to America. He'll be stripped of his practices that make him unique. Are you with that or you quit that? I quit that. <laughs> why do you quit that? Because so, some people come over here and make a better life for themselves, for real. So do you feel like now that you're here in America, whatever, well, you weren't really in Nigeria for long. It was literally two months. Yeah. And so culturally, what does, what defines a Nigerian? Culturally, like, I, like I'm, I'm too Americanized. Like, I'm honestly too <laughs> Americanized. Like, my, my wife say, like, like you the most American Nigerian I've ever met for real. Like, most Nigerians, like, ain't really close. Like, Is she Nigerian? No, she's Jamaican. Oh, Okay. Yeah. And she just felt like you just too Americanized. Yeah. Okay. So when you, you know, if you guys do have children together, or do you have any of your own? I'm about to have one in uh, December. <laughs> what are you having? A boy. Oh. Shout out to you and your wife and your boy. Dang, I'm learning it all now. Congrats <laughs> on the baby. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So you will be, of course, telling your son that he is Jamaican as well as Nigerian. Yeah. 
So is he just going to be Americanized or are you actually going to tell him, like, Dad, what does it mean to be Nigerian? I'm going to try to teach him, like, the side, the Nigerian side. But I know my wife going to teach him, like, her family, like, they real close. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know they, they going to be, he already know the Jamaican side, really. Like, everybody close on that side. So I'm just going to try to teach him what I know from, about, about my side for her. So what, like, me as a person who's never been to Nigerian or, like, your child who's never been to Nigeria, what are you teaching them? What is it like something that you have to know about Nigeria or just the culture? We prideful people for real. I'm just telling like uh I'm gonna tell them what my dad should have told me for real, like like don't let nobody stop you from being you. Always have confidence in yourself. And like and this the world is yours to take and take it. And that's going to your son. All right, so this next one. Anyone that says I do not see color is oblivious to the world's current issues. Do you say that? Uh, Have you? I would said quit that? it. I, don't, I mean, like I, the way I grew, I don't really see color, but like I, I see pe I, like I see racism for real, and I, like when I see it, I, I'll call it out. But I don't think everybody. Of different color of, of like of not black is not racist for isn't racist for real. like some people are some people are not like so I don't really classify everybody in that category like I go off of my interaction with you if I like some, most most times I can notice you're racist like I maybe mean, the first couple words you say for real then I I hold I hold you accordingly so <laughs> what does a racist person typically say other than the n word I don't just like the way like uh. Like the way they come off, they try to be your friend so like so, like so so much. <laughs> like I'm like yo, like they, be, they, they try to be like oh buddy buddy, which I'm like yo, chill out yo, like, you you doing too much for real. Like calm down, but not not everybody racist for real. But you do feel like the ones that are extra friendly, like it's like you racist, like you're trying to overly prove that you're not or cover yeah, up they, something, yeah. but you really are. And the people who say oh I'm not racist, you racist. Off top. So when you view the world, do you actually view it as like, oh, that's a man, that's a woman, that's a baby? Or is it like, that's a black man, that's a white woman, that's a white child? You don't see that at all. No, that's a man. That's a, well, that's a white man, that's a white woman, whatever. You actually, So you do see color. You don't yeah, just I look mean, at it as like, these are people. I, yeah, I guess. Not, I, I, I see. Like, it is, I'm just asking. I, no, I'm just asking. Like, I don't know. I'm I, guess it's, I guess both ways. I'm on both sides, bro, I guess. So, of course, you visually see color, and you you define people based off of the person that they are. Yeah. So it's not like, you're white, I'm going to put you in this category, or you're black, I'm going to put you in this nah. category. It's like, no, nah, you prove it once you talk to me. Yeah. All right, I'm with that. All right, so most poets become rappers because poetry doesn't bring in much money. I'm with that. You do poetry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm both rapper, poet. Why did you decide to go forth with rapping and not poetry? Uh, I think my uh, my sound like fits well on on beats, extremely well on beats. The way I sound. You don't feel like you could do poetry on a beat, like it doesn't have to be necessarily a cappella or no sound. Like it could be done over a beat. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, but no, nah, because I like. Like with my music, I like to really like flow with the rhythm of the of the of the beat. Of the beat. Yeah, I like to really like the flow with it. So poetry, like poetry, you don't really poetry is not a flow. To, like not not really a flow to anything with poetry. It's just like a it's, it's like a thing. I don't know. To me, it's a thing to me. I don't know. It don't really flow like on beats like that. Do you feel like poetry has its own lane? Yeah, it has its own lane. Yeah. But you just decided because you want to like chop up stuff with the actual beat that's your lane yeah. or is it like do you feel like you could actually be a millionaire being a poet you could you could if you, you, like, like, <laughs> you could if you put the like if you want to go in that lane and like dedicate your life and put in the, the time effort to it you definitely could you sound like it's possible anything's possible yeah, and honestly any, <laughs> anything is possible in life anything is possible have you seen it be done my angel she a poet there you go. All right. Baltimore is one of the most dangerous places to live because it's very poor. Too many people have to do crazy things to fight for survival. I'm with that. You definitely with that. I'm with that. 
So, but you said when you lived there, you weren't fearful at all. Not like, uh, not really, because like, with that part I live, I mean, not even around everywhere dangerous, like, whatever, like, with, like where I grew up at, it was like, I guess the county city, city line right there, right, right there, whatever. So, I, like, first, like, part of it, I grew up in, like, in the city part of it, whatever. Then I moved across the county line, but it's still the same thing going on. But it was, like, no, nah, I think, like I said, everybody, like, I was cool with everybody, for real. Did you ever become a part of any of the issues? Like, you got robbed, somebody took your shoes, your book bag, beat you up. You Pretty. don't have no wild stories in Baltimore. It's like, oh, I seen it, but I wasn't in it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of things, but crazy thing, I've never been robbed. Nothing. Nobody really, t- nothing like that for real. Nobody bothered you? Yeah, I was just cool with everybody, for real. I, just, I don't know, I just got this aura about me, like, nobody really, like, everybody just cool with me. Nobody really So you was me. cool with the people that was doing those things, but you wasn't the one doing them? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That's the best way to stay. That's the best way to yeah. stay safe is be cool with everybody and be like in it. All right. So this next one, it is essential at age eighteen to get a credit card. If you don't establish credit early, you'll suffer later when you need it. I ain't with that. You're not with that. No, nah, because at eighteen, you're not really in that right mind frame, responsible enough to handle a credit card because you might max it out and. Mm-hmm. If you don't pay it, like, your credit going to go bad. So I guess you got to be a little bit older than 18 to get a credit card. How old do you feel like is a good age to start establishing credit? I'll say if you're mature enough, like, 21. But if if you got to take time to mature, i say between, like, 25, 26. 25, 26. So when do you purchase a car? I wouldn't. Me, I wouldn't even purchase a car. I wouldn't. Even, I, I'll go to like a, a auction or something, buy a car. That's what people be going wrong. They want like, oh, I want to be flashy. I want to get that new car. Have a car paying four hundred dollars for what? Go to the auction, get you a car. The car already paid off. All you doing is maybe fixing up the car and paying insurance. That's it. You, you saving yourself money. So financially, you feel like you make really great decisions. Yeah, my wife taught me that. I was reckless for real before that, but yeah, she taught me that. You was reckless before? What was you? You was the one maxing out the credit card? I never had a credit card, but I just spent money like crazy. On what? Just trying to be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be fresh. So now you still in the name brand or it's like, nah, I mean, if it look good, it look good. If it look good, if it, it look good. Like, people are so caught up on name brand nowadays, like, not knowing, like, maybe something that's, n- like, it's name, it's name brand, but not it's name brand. Other things mm-hmm. probably cause the same thing as that name brand you wearing for real. Like, like it's just a name. That's to me, that's it. Okay, so you do poetry. You're a fan of Wale. Musically, would you say you're kind of under his umbrella? Like, mm. are you a Wale sound, or is like, do you have a defined sound at this point? I think my sound. I think honestly, I think my sound is very unique. I don't think nobody sound like me. I don't think the way like I rap, I flow like so different than people out right now. It's like people out like in mainstream or people in mainstream, the area? mainstream DMV, Baltimore. Like that just flow different. I don't, I don't know. That's why I guess like, I don't know. I'd be like sometimes I feel like I'm an outcast because the way I like the way I rap. Are you rapping on beat or you off beat? Like what can you describe your flow? I guess like I don't know like like some people rap to the drum patterns in songs or they rap to the melody. I try to rap to both, or I, or I try to rap to the actual how to like if you hear a beat and like everything goes with it. I try to rap exactly how the beat sound. So if I'm talking to you right now and I go and I listen to your music, well, I know it's the same person. Probably not. You don't sound the same way. Do you I don't add think so. bass to your voice, or are you a auto tune kind of guy? Mm, I had to add bass. That's how we like it when I rap. It's probably a lot of pain and emotion let go. Okay. So where will we be finding your music and hearing this unique flow? Uh, yeah. You can catch my music on Spotify. You can type in uh, well, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all streaming platforms. Just type in E dot Z dot E. Okay. And you have any new projects, any performances? Have you performed yet at all? Yeah, I was just got like um this I guess group room with my man, uh, BBK, whatever. We just got off, like, we was doing a tour when I, we went to, uh, we was in D.C. at Pure Lounge. We went to uh, Connecticut, went to New York and Elmira, um, went to Jersey. 
There's been a lot of places uh, performing, just, like trying to get a name up. You definitely performed a lot for a brother that just started. Yeah, hey, I'm going all in. You like, moving. I'm definitely with that. So you are definitely well rounded. You have been through a lot. So tell us some words of wisdom before you leave us today. Words of wisdom, uh always be you. Stay true to yourself. Stay humble. Trust the process. Like and, and pick good friends, I guess. That's okay. you. Pick good friends. Because your friends make you like the the people you have around you is gonna make or break you. And anything you want to do in life. For real, that's facts. That's facts. He left us to what, with that, okay? Check your surroundings. Go go look at your phone and see who <laughs> your friends are and decide what, what numbers you should delete. Do that now. Stop fresh. Facts. I'm Diamond B. Frazier. That is easy. And you are tuning into the Kickback Reloaded. Yeah.